So back in the uh, back in the apex, you've had some successful moments, big moments in your career here. Does it have like a nice uh, feel when you step in, or are you kind of missing that feel of the big arena? Nah, I'm comfortable here, John. Um, I'm happy to be back here. You know what I mean? I got a good fight. You know, it's exciting. It's going to be a thumper, and uh, you know, it's a familiar feeling. So it's good, man. You know, how, you know how I get it's business. I'm trying to hurt this man. This man's trying to hurt me. So it's not going to happen for me. Nice. Had to take some time off, obviously, to heal up. I guess, what was it like for you to have to step away for a little bit? Was it challenging? And, and, and where do you stand now? A little bit frustrating, you know what I mean? I'm injury prone. I just turned 27 years old. And uh, it's a little bit frustrating because every time I get, like, a good thing going, I kind of get hurt. I gotta go. I had to get surgery. So after I beat Gerald, I went and got another surgery on my elbow. Everything's good, you know? And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I've had some other struggles, but I'm here, and I'm ready to rock, and I'm in great shape. And, uh, yeah, man, it's a little bit frustrating, but you, know, I'm here. I'm ready. This is what I did my whole entire life. So this guy doesn't bring anything I'm not ready for. Dig it. Uh, we talked to Razak earlier. We actually saw you guys kind of run into each other right outside the meeting room. We got a little bit worried for a second. It seemed like it was pleasant there. I guess what you think of that interaction? He can be a pretty intense dude sometimes, but it seemed like it was pretty pleasant. Listen, no man's going to steamroll me. No man's going to walk over me. When I walked in, Joaquin Buckley was kind of hating on the B. Joe Pfeiffer thing, and I heard him running his mouth in the back. And, uh, you know, he was respectful afterwards. But when I walked in, he was like, man, G B. Joe Pfeiffer. And then Abdul was like, B. Joe Pfeiffer, who? He's like, fuck B. Joe Pfeiffer. And then he saw me, and then he put his hand out to shake my hand. So, listen, I was cool with not shaking a hand, but he showed me respect. I gave him respect back. He doesn't have to like me. He doesn't have to respect me. But... That man will feel me, and he will respect me in that cage. That's what matters. So out here, all I said is, yo, you say Buckley's a bitch. He said, yeah, he's a bitch. I said, why you shake his hand? And he's like, oh, because he's the past. You're the present. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, just, just understand. If I think somebody's a bitch, I'm not shaking your hand. And I mean, that's me. So I'll keep that intensity. What are you going to do, sleep me? I can bang, bro. I'm here. You know what I mean? That's why I'm fighting you, and, I, and I'll fight everybody. So, uh, yeah, it just irritates me a little bit. You know what I mean? But we cool. I like him. He's just, you know, I, but like, here's the thing. I got respect for everybody in the UFC. You know what I mean? But I'm not afraid of nobody in the UFC. And the reason I say that is because I've been watching all these guys. You know what I mean? I knew I would be in this position. Um, I, I, like, I like Abdul's team. You know, I like his coaches. I, I didn't like the fight necessarily because of his coaches. But you know what? This is, he's not my friend. I like his coaches, but I don't like him. What do you think about him just as a fighter? Like, he does have some impressive knockouts. He's had some maybe gas tank issues over the years. I mean, what do you think overall about what he presents to you? I think that he will never be somebody that was ever good enough or will ever be good enough to challenge for the title. When you look at me, you have question marks, but you know there's potential to be a title challenger, if not a title holder. So I think that's the difference, right? I think uh, I'm young. He's older. I think... He's got big power, so do I, but I have speed, and I have cardio, and I have wrestling, and I have jiu-jitsu. You look at this man, he's a kickboxer, and he's a very dangerous kickboxer, you know what I mean? So, but I think he's very singular in his approach. I don't think he's going to be able to, like, you got to look at the trend of time, right? I don't think he's going to be so diversified in this fight against me, somebody who's long, who uses their range well, who faints back, and uh, I'm not intimidated, bro. Like, you, this, if this guy thinks he's going to walk me down and throw bombs, and they're all hooks, for that matter. You're going to get caught, motherfucker. You're going to get caught. I, 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 I will catch you. And I got bigger power than this man. Let's not forget, he used to be at 170. That's where his knockouts were. So he's dangerous. He's a powerful man, and I respect him. I've trained my ass off because I respect him. I don't want to get knocked the fuck out. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you right now, it's this only man's chance is to knock me out. He has that ability. But as far as what I've seen... His two fights in middleweight, or three fights, or whatever it's been, I don't even know how many fights in middleweight, but his only clean knockout of middleweight was Alessio DiCurcio with a head kick, and that was one shot. And it was beautiful, you know? Um, but it wasn't a crazy setup, and when he knocked out Ribeiro, he hit him with the same jab, right hand, jab, right hand, jab, right hand. Go back, watch the fight. He hit him with the same fucking combo three times in a row. I'm not going to be there for you to hit me three times in a row. This is a mixed martial arts fight. He was complaining that Buckley took him down. And Buckley's not a wrestler. So, he's good. He's not my level. Last thing for me, you went here. I mean, co-main event. You've had a spotlight on you since you came into the UFC, obviously. What do you feel like is next? I mean, is it time to start talking about rankings and ranked opponents? Do you feel like you're still developing a little bit? Like, what do you feel like you earn with a victory here? So, my whole thing in saying taking my time with my career, right, is 
nobody has to understand in this room. Nobody on the UFC team has to understand in this room. I come from nothing. I come from being dirt poor, fucking gathering change to, to get the things that I needed. And, uh, you know, trying to figure out a lot of things in life that I didn't have the guidance for, unfortunately. And if I'm going to fight the top 15, which are the baddest men in the world, I want to start working towards financial security. And I will risk my health, my body, everything, my mind, so I can secure that. I do not want to be one of these guys that is done fighting and is brokenhearted, that was giving his everything for the minimum. And I'm not complaining about what I'm getting paid. You know, I'm fighting a guy who's 45th, 46th, something like that. Abdul is a bad motherfucker. Like, that's the thing that's scary about this fight, right? I'm very realistic. I know I'm better than him everywhere. But could he beat me? Absolutely. It's a fight. Do I think he's going to beat me? Absolutely not. You know, but I, I will dare to be bold and say the things that I'm confident in. And, um, yeah, I mean, you want me to fight top 15 guys, let's talk real money. That's it. That's all. I, I, want, I want to be... A superstar, I have the charisma, I have the confidence, I have the fight style, I have it all. But I want to, I want to know that I'm okay when, if, if and ever I have to retire early or quit this sport or whatever. You know, I'm injury prone, so that's also, I got to keep that in mind, you know what I mean? Unfortunately, I just, I keep getting fucking hurt, man, so it's, it's very frustrating. And uh, yeah, let's, let's talk after this. Let me finish this motherfucker. Let's talk. Hi, Joe. Oh, over here. Hello. Um, when Razak was in here, you know, we asked him about Buckley, and his mood changed quite drastically when talking about him versus talking about you in the sense that he seemed to be really angry at him, and he kind of was like, eh, about you. Do you feel like maybe he's focusing a little bit too much on Buckley? Do it. Worry about Buckley. I don't give a shit. I don't give a fuck. Worry about Buckley then, you know what I mean? Like, And I'm not saying – I'm being arrogant right now because I'm irritated because – that, to me, right there, shows that you're missing what's in front of you. I'm not just some kid. I'm somebody this guy could build his career back up off of. You're 6-5 and five in the UFC, bro. And you're on what? You, you're coming off one win, and you were on a three-fight skid before that, or four-fight skid, or whatever. Technically, you shouldn't even be in the UFC. If I'm at my age and I lost that many times, I'd be cut. You know what I mean? So I just worry about Buckley. I said the same thing to Bucko. I said, who you want to win? And he's like, man, I don't care, but, like, you guys are going to steal my bonus. I'm going to steal your bonus. I'm bonus worthy. I talk shit, and I back it up. So, and I talk shit in a respectful way. I know Abdul is tough. I've given all my preparation that I possibly could for this camp so I don't get knocked the fuck out. That is this man's only way to beat me. He's not going to outgrapple me. He's not going to submit me. You have to knock me out. That's it. So, you know, that, that's his problem. He wants to still, he said he was focused on me in the present and not the past, but then I said, why are you shaking his hand? So, why, then why are you going to come up here and get upset about it? I don't know all the beef. I understand if another man says he's going to knock you the fuck out and then he wrestles and you're upset. Sure, I can understand it, but this is MMA, brother. You're in the wrong sport if you want to be a kickboxer. I don't know what to tell you. What happens if you fight Bo Nickel? You going to cry that he took you down? Like, get better at fighting. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Joe. Um, How you doing? Good, man. Uh, so obviously the, the Contender Series is back. It's in their final week next week. I just wanted to know like what that show meant to you. Obviously, you know your first appearance, you had this horrific injury that kind of <coughs> screwed your life up for a little bit, and then you go back, and then you get this B. Joe Piper, and you get all the spotlight on you. So just what, what did that show mean to you? I think the show. Um I think the show is a great way to show how hungry you are because it puts this pressure on you to go out there and fight out of your comfortability because if you don't and you just fight to your comfortability, you're not going to be drafted as a talent. You know, I think Dana has gotten a lot more lenient and generous with his contracts, um, and um, which I respect, you know what I mean, because this is a hard way to make a living and everybody deserves an opportunity. Now, what they do with that opportunity given, you know, that's up to them now. You know, he gave you the chance to do your thing. But you guys got to understand, Dustin Stoltzfus, I sit here right now, and I don't think there's any reporter that says that that man was a better fighter than me, especially when I came back and I shone. That's a fact. And I was obsessed with it. I even talked to Dana White personally and begged him for that fight, and he just doesn't think it's a good idea. And I'm cool with that. You know what I mean? So I, that's how, that's how hell-bent I was on that. And, um, but you know what? I was a sore loser, too, in a, in a way. I am a sore loser. I don't. I don't think that man bested me, so 
I got discredited, man. I broke my arm. I was out. I had no money. I was depressed. I was suicidal. I went to kill myself. I was like, man, I worked my whole fucking life for this, and now I'm nothing. I'm sitting out in my wrestling coach's basement crying, telling my girl, like, I'm nothing. Like, I'm literally nothing, and I'm sorry I let you down. I, I try not to get upset about it now because I still carry, like, a bitter chip. Like, I, I lost sponsorships. People didn't want to talk to me. But then I came back. You know, I had a strong management team, and uh, they never left me. I've been with Lloyd Pearson since I signed, and I don't say this to, you know, Lloyd Pearson, my management, go with my manager. Not many people can say that they have a friend in their manager, and I truly believe that. And uh, I believe the people on my team that I now have, that I'm surrounded with, you know, even Chandler Henry sitting out here who's documented my life for my documentary and, you know, just the people that I've acquired, Alex Davis, Disruptive, and, uh, you know, I've really gathered a team to come back and it was all possible because I got another opportunity on Dana White's Contender Series and Dana White's the one that put me on the scene, you know, and flew me out and was super generous. And let's not forget that man gave me a hand, uh, a, hand a helping hand and, and, you know, gave me a place to live for the next year so I could pursue this. Third fight, co-main event, third fight in the UFC, your, final, your co-main event. I mean, just what's that? What do you think the UFC sees in you? And I guess how does that make you feel that you're the co-main event? Um, I think I deserve to be here, plain and simple. You know, just for the hate that I feel from the other. I don't feel hate from the other fighters. But I can feel the animosity. So fuck you. You know what I mean? You're not me, right? You shouldn't be another person. That's what Abdul said. You shouldn't want to be another person. But it rubbed everybody the wrong way. Suck it. Suck it long and hard, brother. That's all I got to say. Because I'm me, and you guys want to be me. That's how I see it. You know what I mean? I don't have to apologize for what Dana said. I don't have to feel weird because they don't like it. Fuck you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm deserving of this opportunity. You think, you think, we're, you think I'm a co-main event because of Abdul? You're 6-5 and five in the UFC. I'm not saying you're not good. But I'm undefeated in the UFC. I'm only 2-0, and, and I haven't beat shit. So I'm arrogant, I'm cocky, and whatever. Saturday night, I get to go out there and prove why. And, uh, you know, if it's a shit performance, I'm going to apologize to you guys after because that's not what I come here to do. Um, but at the same time, I also come here to win both my fucking checks. So I'm still a poor kid. I still have a poor kid's mentality, and I'm not one of these guys that's rolling in money and then is fucking off. Like, this is all I got, brother. This is all I got. And even now, if I slip up now... I don't get a new contract. I don't get to get more money. I don't get to call my shots type deal. So, yeah, I mean, Dana White changed my life, and uh, I'm trying to change the company in a way, you know, make it make it good, make it entertaining. Yeah, this is the shit you don't prepare for, right? I'm going to go off on a little tangent. Like, this is the shit you don't get taught. You don't get taught what to say. You don't – everybody's going to say, dude – there's so many fucking weirdos out there. Everybody's going to judge me anyway. I have a little bit of a chip on my shoulder because it's like there's so many people. My life is open for judgment, right? Because I've also put my life story out there. So I'm cool with that. But it's like everybody will sit there and shit on something that you're going to do. Oh, man, this kid's cocky. Oh, man, this is... It's like, brother, you could never sit here and do what I do. You could never sit here and do what I do. And for anybody that's going to criticize another fighter, I'll criticize a fighter because I'm going to get in there. I'm a fighter. Now, if I eat my own words and this dude kicks my face through the floor... I, earn, I, earn, I deserve it, you know what I mean? But it's just, I'm going to say what I'm going to say, and I'm going to go out there and back it up. So I don't know how the fuck I got on that tangent, but, yeah, I'm here. Oh, good. I'll, I'll, I'll take from that tangent. Um, speaking of, like, criticizing, I'm, I'm sure you've seen a lot of people criticize Sean Brady and kind of hop, hop off his hype train. They can all suck a dick for criticizing that man. The thing that happened with Jack Dell, Jack Dell is a pussy. Because he was literally in the hospital with staff that could have trans like that got to his bloodstream that he could have died or something bad could have happened to the kid. You know what I mean? You think he doesn't want to fight for a whole year? Come on, bro. I thought that was a low blow. And the only reason I get that upset is because that's that's one of my closest friends. You don't do that shit. You know, it's not fair to his wife, it's not fair to him. We're all fighters, you should give a fuck about another fighter's well being. I don't care how much I don't like any of these guys, but I don't want Abdul to be sick or laugh at him because he couldn't make a fight, bro. This is the smallest part of fucking real life, so yeah, fuck anybody criticizing Sean Brady. Wait till he comes back. Right, exactly. And, you know, obviously he su suffered his first defeat. You've suffered your first defeat before. Like, I guess everyone that's just kind of doubting him because you lost to Bilal, who's obviously probably should be fighting for the title. Like, what do you say to that? Bro, he never fought out of the fucking country. i never been out of the country. We went 14 and a half hours away. Khabib, who's all-time great, is in the corner. This kid, this kid does not express his emotion. He keeps it to himself. He went out there and he, he took a chance, you know, against the best in the world. He's fighting the best in the world. The dude lost once and everybody disrespects him. 
This is what this game sucks dick for. Because everybody will love you when you're the man, and then everybody shits on you the second you slip up. Where, where's the love for the true, the true fans? We're the only country that shits on our own. I can't stand that shit. It drives me nuts. I'm a USA. I'm, I'm American. I rep the flag. I'm going to walk with that shit tomorrow or Saturday, whenever. Where's the support for your fellow Americans? You know what I mean? Respect to Bilal. Bilal was the better man. He earned it. Nobody should discredit him. But don't disrespect your own guy and start talking shit on him. Like, oh, you lost me money. Don't fucking bet your money then. You know what I mean? So, but he took a chance, brother. He took a chance, and he went out on the shield. He didn't tap. He got punched in the face fucking 25 times. And uh, wait till you see the new Sean Brady. Now he's tasted defeat. That kid was beating people people never thought he would be. And, uh, you know, I love the guy. Um, so I, get, I am defensive about him. And, uh, you know, wait till he comes back, brother. Wait till he comes back. And finally for me, uh, some of your thoughts on Sean Strickland winning the championship. And if you were a matchmaker, who would you have him fight next? Well, I'm not a matchmaker. Um, but uh, you know what? Congrats to Sean Strickland. I know he comes from a traumatized background. He's always been nothing but respectful to me, um, I'm, and even if he doesn't remember me. Uh, but he, uh, he was in the PI once. You know, he offered to train with me and whatnot, asked me to come train. Unfortunately, I was, didn't do it. And... Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm happy for him. You know, he's the guy that's being outspoken in his own way. Um, it's not how I would say certain things, right? But that's why I'm me and he's him. And uh, I don't – I'm not going to buck against anybody that speaks how they feel, and I think that's a rarity these days, and I think people will learn to appreciate the fact that he stands behind what he believes, right or wrong. And that's the whole point of freedom of speech. That's the whole point of freedom of choice. But you're told you're not allowed to say certain words or you're canceled. You're told you're not allowed to go against certain things or you're this, you're that. And it's, you know what? Let everybody be who they want to be, but don't force it upon other people. And that's all I'll say on that so I don't get canceled. But, um, but yeah, you know, so I'm happy for him. And if I was to say who should he fight next, I don't think I'm a fan of Izzy. You got to remember, guys, I've been watching this all the way back since UFC 3, 4, or whatever. So I'm a fan of everybody as much as I'm a fighter in here. So sometimes that gets in my own way. Um, mm. I mean, DDP and Izzy make sense to me, and I think the winner of Apollo and uh, Shemaev. So I think, I think Sean should fight the winner of Apollo and Shemaev. Thanks, man. Thank you. Over here. You mentioned the financial goals. Are there any other goals you've set for yourself, whether in life in general or in the fight game that you've made since you made your mark on the contender series winning that contract? Yeah, just none that I've shared with you guys. Um, just uh, the only thing that matters for the public, I don't post my personal life for a reason because I know nobody really gives a fuck. So, um, and, and you guys don't deserve to know my personal life, you know what I mean? Like who I love, who I care for, who I want to take care of. There's a lot of things I do, even in my position now, as young as I am, and I, I, I take care of the people that are in my my core group. And I've had a lot of things that have kind of made me go a little bit sour where I've lost friendships and people talk shit on me and things like that because they think I've gotten big time just because I'm, you know, I got because they think I've made a ton of money. And I'm like, dude. Or, you know, I've kind of cut off even more distraction now because it's the burden, you know, the burden of like, oh, now you got all this hype, brother. I, I was never hyped until I got in the UFC. But in my own head, I was always hyped. So like, that's why the co-main event, it doesn't matter. You could put me first, you could put me last. I'm built for it, you know what I mean? It doesn't mean shit to me. What matters is that I win the fight. So, uh, but yeah, I got more than financial goals, brother. I wanna, I wanna travel the world, I wanna buy a house, you know, I wanna have a family one day, and I wanna know that uh, I took every, every daring, scary moment serious, and uh, I didn't grow old because I was afraid or because I was scared, you know what I mean? That's, that's one of my worst things I've convinced myself of, is I never wanna grow old, and I get choked up even now because it's like I never want to grow old and realize that, uh, you know, I don't matter no more. And I didn't go out there and give it everything I got, man, because there was a certain point in my life where that was it. So I'm here. I'm fucking ready. And, uh, yeah, fuck this dude. Awesome. And um, do you have a message for someone that may be going through setbacks in, in their life, maybe when uh, towards reaching their goals? Yeah, listen to the unspoken gut feeling that you have. My biggest telling of greatness, in my opinion, was my gut, my heart, and my mind. It was something I could never put a finger on, but it was something I always felt, and I always said, I don't think I'm meant to be average. I don't think I'm meant to be average. And brother, listen, I have people trying to chop me down, including my father, actively. This dude's got a fake fucking YouTube account to go on and hate on the fact. Tells me, tells me that 
you know, I was a bad kid or I stole his story. Imagine a father convincing himself that a son stole his fucking story and believing that. Trying to call me a racist, all these things, blah, 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 bro. People, and, and if I give that attention, right, like I'm giving in this interview, just to let you guys know and the things that happen, it's like there's some shitty people out there and they don't care if you're mentally okay. Everybody says, oh, yeah, you should talk. You should do this. You should do that. You should talk to the people that give a fuck about you because in general, the public doesn't care. We're desensitized in this country to not care about other people's problems. So don't sit here and be weak or be afraid to say what you have to say because of cancel culture or because someone doesn't believe in you. So that's what I would say to them. Believe in who you are. Don't, negle don't neglect your morale. Don't let all this weird socially acceptable shit that's going on allow you to um, veer off track and listen to the unspoken that's in your gut. Because if you don't think you're meant to be average and that's the only thing you can explain it as, stick with it until that's gone. Nobody in this room can outwork you if you have that. I promise. I couldn't go with whatever you think you're going to be the man at. I couldn't go outwork you at that and unless I had that same feeling. It's not possible. So just stay diligent, dudes. Don't quit. Don't be a pussy of 2023. Thank you. Hey, Joe, right here. You're obviously talking about the changes you've made, not only mentally, physically, in your heart, and your mind, and soul, but you also mentioned how you were injury prone for you. Obviously, that's very frustrating, but how have you had made those changes because it is very much a mentality for you that failure is not an option? Yeah, you know, it's, 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 that's exactly the strongest thing that I have is failing is not an option. We're always banged up. We always have injuries. <clears throat> but uh, I trained really hard, and I trained with some of the best in the world. And one of my biggest teammates, and the reason I keep shouting him out is because I want everybody to, to realize, you know, who I train with. And one of the kids is sitting right there in Jose Soto. I want that kid to be here one day, and I want to show him, you know, passing on to the next generation, um, even though he's only two years younger than me. Uh, but, you know, I'm planting seeds for him, and uh, I want him to see what this is like, and I want him to experience it. And... Uh, to answer your question, it's just about self-belief. It's understanding that I have skills. Those skills don't go away because I got injured, you know what I mean? It's just I train a little bit different. I train a little bit safer. Then I know when to push. I know when to give my body rest, and that's just really fine-tuning. It's, it's, it's a weird thing, brother. Since, since I turned 20 fucking four, everything's broke on me. Broken hands, broken ankles, broken fucking mental, everything. It's crazy. So, But uh, I'm good, brother. I'm good for this one. I'm here. I'm strong. I feel good, I'm ahead of my weight cut, and uh, I think that's gonna be huge. And uh, no matter what this man says, how he just, you know, pfft, uh, not really thinking about me, you're gonna have to face me. And you're gonna have to, <laughs> I hit just as hard, brother. Awesome, thank you, good luck Saturday.